This episode is for the dreamers and the doers. It's for the woman who has a desire to work to make her dream come true. And most of all, it's a life lesson because sometimes our dreams come true in ways we never imagined. In the spotlight, singer, songwriter, CEO, and founder of Platinum Circle Media in Nashville, Tennessee, J.C. Don Valeris. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are straight you? Straight from Nashville, looking so good today. Oh, gosh. Yes, straight from the red-eye flight. <laughs> <laughs> so let's tell your story. You grew up in Chelmsford, Massachusetts. Did you always know you wanted to be a singer? I did. I did. When I was five years old, um, my parents took me to my very first concert, was, which was at the Orpheum Theater in Boston, um, to see Sharon Lois and Bram. Uh, they were children's entertainers that were on Nickelodeon, and I was in love with them. I had to see them, so they took me to see them, and they walked out on stage. I saw them, and it was like this magic in me. You know, it was instant. I was just consumed by how amazing they were, and I knew that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So from that moment on, that was it. Five years old. <laughs> Tell me about the first time you ever sang in front of someone. What was the song? Do you remember the moment? You know, I don't remember the song, but the first time I ever sang in public was actually at my kindergarten graduation. And I walked up to my teacher before it and I said, you know, I would love to do a solo. And I was a really shy kid. I mean, I'm still kind of more on the introverted side. So for me to do that, when I look back, it's unbelievable that I even had the courage to do that. But it just shows how much you know, it was something that I really loved and always wanted to do. You know, we all need someone who believes in us. And when we're a dreamer and we say, I'm going to be a movie star, I'm going to be a singer, I'm going to be an astronaut, uh, whatever. Who was that person for you who believed in you? Oh, my gosh. You know, I was so lucky to have both of my parents who encouraged me from day one. Um, my dad was in music before I was born. He actually went to Berkeley School of Music. And so he was involved in that, um, you know, before I came into the world. And then when he wanted a family, he kind of slowed that down to start his own his own life. But he always encouraged me. My mom always encouraged me. Uh, my grandmother encouraged me. So from very early on, I was blessed, you know, absolutely beyond belief to have people that cared enough about me to do that. What happens to you when you sing? Um, you know, I just... I feel like it's something that's always been a part of me. So it's just a natural thing. I don't feel, you know, any different than I do just sitting here across from you. It's something that's always been a thing that makes me happy. And I, I absolutely love doing it. I'll always do it for the rest of my life. Not only are you a singer, but you're also a songwriter. And I have so much respect for songwriters. It's a discipline. It's an art. And I have had a chance to talk to so many songwriters, and my favorite is James Taylor. Oh, and I yeah. asked him to tell me about his method for writing a song. And he said, well, you know, I just get phrases, sentences that just pop into my head, and I keep a little pad of paper and a pen in my pocket. And I'll just, almost like a reporter, right? And he'll just write down that line and then stick it back in his pocket. And so his wife has learned long ago to never throw away pieces of paper that she finds in his <laughs> pockets. And then he takes all those pieces of paper and he puts them on the table. And here was what he said to me. I bring them home. And there's my story. Wow. Isn't that cool? That's incredible. Yes. How do you write a song? You know, I first started off writing with... Um, without an instrument. I didn't know how to play any instrument. And I started writing out of necessity. Um, when I was about 21 years old, I had some vocal issues and I lost the ability to sing. For about a year, I was having lots of problems. I had to quit performing. It was devastating to me. So I decided that I needed to somehow continue in music. So what was I going to do? The only thing I could think about was writing, but I didn't know how to play an instrument. So what do I do? So I sat down and I just started writing out lyrics, you know, and thinking of melodies in my head and putting them together. And I found great other musicians who knew how to play a lot better than so I did. So you could just say it goes like this and just hum <laughs> exactly. it and they would find the notes, exactly. right? Exactly. So that's how it started. And then I eventually learned to play guitar and it grew from there. But I still always revert back to that because that's how I taught myself, you know. So I always start with lyrics and a melody and then apply the music later. So. Let's talk about losing your voice because that's every singer's nightmare. It is. Tell me that story. It is, yeah. And it's something I haven't really talked too much about um, at all before, but I was doing a performance up in New Hampshire at a fairground and I had been performing outside at venues all summer for years, four hour sets. And it got to the point where my voice was just completely 
shot. It was just, it needed a break, you know? And I didn't listen to it, and I should have. And so um, I was in the middle of a song. I went to hit a high note, and my voice just completely stopped. It was, you know, the universe going, nope, you need to take a step back here. So um, I had to stop halfway through that show. I had to cancel the rest of the year's shows that I had planned out. And, I mean, I was performing two to three times a week. It was it was a life-changing for me. But, you know, I tend to not look at it like that because looking back, it led me to this whole other thing that my life has become. And without that happening to me, who knows, you know, so. You packed up your car and you moved to Nashville in 2009 to pursue the dream of making it in country music. And there was a boy involved from <laughs> what I understand. Tell us the story. Yes, I I had been visiting Nashville from about 2002 when I graduated high school, and I knew that I had always wanted to move there. So in um, 2009, um, my then boyfriend, who is now my husband. <laughs> I'm we, glad that worked out. It did work out. Thank God. Um, we decided that we wanted a change, and he is in music as well. He is um, He's a, a guitarist, and he also is a guitar educator as well. So we moved down to Nashville. We loaded up all of our furniture into a U-Haul truck and... We hit the road, and I'm telling you, it was like a Lifetime movie. I was looking out the window, crying, waving at my parents, and I think I cried for probably the first two hours of the drive because as excited as I was to start that new adventure, I mean, that's a scary thing. You know, I was only, I think I was uh, 25 years old or something, and, you know, that's terrifying. But... You know, someone very wise told me once, we only learn when we're brave, when we're courageous. Absolutely. If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're not going to move to the next spot, are you? No, you're not. And I'm a firm believer in if, you know, if there's something to try and you feel in your heart that you need to try it, just try it. Because I would rather have done that and failed and knew that I had done it than to have always wondered. Woulda, so, shoulda, coulda, right? Yeah. And I remember right before we pulled out of the driveway, I looked at my dad and I, and I was crying and I said, Dad, am I doing the right thing? You know, and he reminds me of that all the time. He's like, so what do you think? Did you make the right decision? What did he say at that moment? He said, yes. He said, you are doing the right thing. And he just reassured me and my mom reassured me. And it was, I don't know, it's, I, I don't regret it. <laughs> On the other hand, there are often naysayers, people who will say, good luck, kid. You'll never make it. Mm hmm. Did you experience this along the way and how'd you get past it? I did, actually. Um, I was just telling someone this story. I had two teachers that I admired at the time um, who basically said to me, you don't have the confidence that it takes to pursue a career in the music industry. Um, and like I said, I have always been kind of shy, kind of introverted. You know, I'm not an outgoing person. I've always been very focused on one thing, and that's my music career. So um, to have people say to me, this isn't this isn't going to be good for you. It has actually had a reverse effect and it tends to fuel me and it tends to excite me even more. Not because that's I want like to go a vitamin. It is. It is. And it's not because I want to go and prove anybody wrong or anything like that. It's more of an internal thing. Whereas if someone says I can't do something, it's that much more of an ambition inside me to go. Oh, really? <laughs> Watch me. Exactly. Exactly. Describe the energy of Nashville to us and specifically the music community there. Oh, it's huge. It's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, the whole town is like on fire with music 24-7 and not just country music. Um, I think that's what initially had made me want to move there. I was always a huge lover of classic country music. Um, I grew up on 90s country music and early 2000s country music. And so when I went there, that for the first time, that vibe was still so alive, you know, and it still is. But it has since graduated to pop music and R&B and blues and all this. And no matter where you go any day of the week, you are sure to find phenomenal music. Somewhere along the way, you adjusted your compass and you started doing social media for singers that you had met. Tell me how this happened. I did. Um, so when I first moved to Nashville and I was writing and singing and doing all that, I was writing with a lot of um, songwriters who were a little bit older than me at a higher generation. Um, and so they Maybe a little more wisdom, a yes, little more experience, absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. And people that actually I could learn a lot from. And then I started realizing that they did not have the knowledge of you know, website design and, and social media and all that kind of stuff. So I just started helping friends. And I had one friend in particular who said to me, you know, I'm, I'm really desperate here. You've got you've to help me. You know more than I do. So I started doing that. And little by little, artists started kind of recognizing that I had this talent. It wasn't something I ever set out to do. And 
I just all of a sudden one day woke up and I had just a boatload of artists that I was working for. And I said, I need to start a company. <laughs> so Wow, that's I a did. great story. And these are famous people. So they go are. ahead and brag some of oh, these gosh. some of these clients <laughs> that you have. You told me oh, Pam goodness. Tillis. Yes, I started off working with Lori Morgan and Pam Tillis. They were probably the first two bigger artists that I started working with. And I was um, the project manager for their duo. Um, they had put out an album together and I was working on that. Um, doing graphic design, social media, marketing, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, from there, I went on to work with um, a record label, and we put out uh, Bobby Bear's last record. He's a Country Music Hall of Famer. Um, right now, I'm working with Ricky Skaggs, who is of know, course 15-time Grammy Award winner, and Colin Ray, um, who is a phenomenal artist. And um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty awesome. It really is. Every you look day so happy so... when you talk about it. Oh gosh, I love it. It's when you get to do what you love and you get to work with people who inspire you, I mean, what more is there, really, you know? Ten years have passed since you went to Nashville, and now you are completely immersed in this company, Platinum Circle Media. Mm -hmm. So tell me what you do for your clients. What do you offer? We offer all kinds of digital marketing services. So if you are looking for social media management or if you, um, you know, need some graphic design pieces to promote a tour or um, and really anything, if you're promoting a single or an album or anything like that, we then take all of your great things and we put them online. So, um, you know, whatever we can do to help market that and get it out to the fans. And I actually started the company um, because... A lot of the artists that were asking me to help them were also very young, and they were artists who really couldn't afford to um, hire, you know, a huge company in Nashville to do it. But they wanted to be of the level of their peers, and I was in that position when I first started out. So to be able to offer a service that I desperately needed when I was young, um, that was something that kind of really helped me develop my, um, you know, my company and, and build on that. So. It became your mission. It did. It did. Yeah. And, you know, I my sister once said sent me a quote and it said, be who you needed when you were younger. And I've really I think about that quote every single day because it's so strange to arrive at the place where you are the person that you actually needed when you were younger. Right. And so having the ability to kind of nurture these younger artists and help them and create these pieces that actually do put them in line with a Ricky Skaggs or a Colin Ray. You know, it's the same service I offer someone who's 15 and just starting out that I do for them. Yeah, it's on a different level, but, you know, you're being presented in the same polished and classy way. And so that's something I really am strong about, you know, feeling wise. You have also launched a YouTube page where you give advice to young artists. And I was taking a look at some of your tutorials. You <laughs> you talk about live shows as the number one way to make money. Uh -huh. Put on a show yourself. Do the download cards. Sell more online. Talk to some of the young singers who might be listening to us today. Oh, What's well, your advice? My Well, my advice is to watch my channel because <laughs> hopefully it will help you. Um, no, it's just it goes along with what I was saying. You know, when I was younger, I didn't really have anyone who knew more about the music business than I do or did at the time. Um, and, you know, I still don't really have that person. I don't you know, it's hard to find somebody who can just kind of turn to and lean on for advice and to to build you up and to encourage you. So, you know, if I had a, had a person like myself, who knows what would have been possible for me even, you know, more than I could have dreamed maybe. So to be able to kind of help an artist with information and knowledge, I think knowledge in the music industry is the number one thing that's going to put you a step ahead of your, um, your peers. So having the knowledge of things like how to have a well-written biography or how to pitch yourself for a, a show or, you know, just about publishing rights. So you're not, you know, in a position where you lose money, anything that can just kind of help you. I've tried to create this channel to do that. Tell us how to find the channel again. It's youtube.com slash JC Don Valeris. All right. Being a successful entrepreneur requires what? Fill in the blank. Oh my gosh. 100% belief in yourself. You have said that when you were trying to make your way as a singer, you had no roadmap, you had no mentors in the music business, that you are a mentor now. What has this meant to you? Um, you know, I think that that's a very good question. I think being able to give back to younger artists, I see myself a lot in so many of them. And I think about that, you know, that little girl who went to 
the Sharon Lewis and Bram concert at five years old. <laughs> and I, it's so true, but I think about these young artists and, and how valuable it is to have somebody say, I believe in you or encourage them and support them. Cause a lot of them don't have that from parents or whatever. And so, or they've got the naysayers saying, Oh, come on, that's exactly. not going to happen. And there will always be those people, no matter yeah. what in your career, there's always going to be people going, Nope, you can't do this, you know, but if I can help one person, you know, when I do my YouTube videos, I pretend that I'm just talking to one individual. I'm not sitting there pretending I'm talking to a million people because really I only believe one person is probably watching. <laughs> but I try to talk to it, you know, the camera as if it were one person and try to give that advice. And so just being able to connect with another young artist on that level is really it's wonderful. It's probably the most important thing that I think that I do and the thing that brings me the most joy. So You know, you're on the right track because that's an old radio trick. So I'll tell you that to be successful on the radio, I remember my boss telling me years ago, I want you to remember I want you to think about reaching through the radio and touching somebody on the shoulder. Really? One person. Not the 60,000 people who were listening at a time, which was a little more relaxing for me because right. I was so scared. I know. Right? Oh, gosh, I get scared, too. And it helps me to just pretend it's just me and this one little there person. You go. So. What is the moral of this story for you? What has been the lesson? And can you pass that along to listeners who are listening around the world to the show? The lesson. I think the lesson is that, you know, if you have something that you want to do with your life, there really isn't anyone stopping you, no matter how many people are telling you maybe it's not a good idea. Like I said, I had a middle school teacher and a high school teacher flat out say to me, you should not do this. You should not be in music. And I was making a living in music at the time. So it's I mean, I started making even in high school, you were making yeah, a living at, at around 13, 14. I started making money singing. I was singing at funerals. No wonder I was a weird girl. I would leave class in the middle of the day in my black velvet dress, go sing at a funeral, and I would come back with money in my pocket. <laughs> but it's still... <laughs> I got to get a picture of that. Do we it's have any... Do your I parents have, have any I pictures? I do. Okay, I we're going to definitely post a picture I of will. that. But I mean, even after all that, I was, you know, leaving school and I was making a living doing. I still had people telling me this isn't for you. So, you know what? Just... Do what is in your heart. And I truly am 100% a believer that you can really become whatever it is you want to become. You've had plenty of obstacles in your path. How did you get around them? Um, I don't really I don't really choose to look at them as obstacles. I try to see something that happens to me, like when I lost my voice, and I try to make good out of it. Because as I've gotten older and I've looked over the history of what I've done in my life, every time I have thought that it was going to be the end of the road for me, it has led me someplace better. And I think with experience and age comes being able to look back on your life and seeing that, maybe not in the moment necessarily. There are still things that happen to me and I'm like, why is this happening? Right. But eventually I always find that it will present itself in a in a way that I understand it and have moved on and become better because of it. I found a quote about dreamers and doers. It goes like this. Remember, it isn't the dreamers who have good lives. It's actually the doers. Remember also, there are three P's to remember for success. Passion, planning, and perseverance. This is a person named Homer Hickam. What do you think about that quote? Wow, I love that. I absolutely believe that. I think that you have to, I'm really big on business plans and not, I mean, I don't think you have to be some financial guru to make a business plan for your life. I think you need to sit down and say, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to go. And I, I do see a lot of young artists coming into Nashville who don't have this mentality. And to be completely honest, those are the ones I also see going home a couple of years later because they don't have a vision. They just think they want a career in music. They want to be famous. They want to do this thing and have it instantly. But if you sit back and you really look at the next couple of years of your life and say, this is what I want to do, and you start to create the steps to make that happen, chances are it's probably going to happen for you. And I'm really big on wish boards and dream boards and envisioning things. I like to make lists of goals that I want to achieve. And I have a huge um, cork board above my desk with all the things and pictures that I hope to have happen for me. And I'm a big believer if you can visualize things and think of them every single day, they're always in your head. So every opportunity that comes your way, you can begin planning. Oh, that could lead to this and this could lead to this. So Yes, it sounds like I you've been reading that. The Secret lately. Oh, my gosh. I'm such One a lover of, my favorite of books. The Secret. Me, too. Me, too. I believe it 100%. I think we all have the ability to, you know, to do what we want. 
You flip on the radio and you hear a great song. What makes a great song? J.C. Don Valeris. <laughs> I think a great song is any song that makes you feel something. You know, it's it's something that makes you feel happy or sad or kind of defines a time in your life. I think music for me is very nostalgic. If I hear a song, I remember exactly where I was when I heard it. Um, I remember the feeling I had, what the weather was like, you know. So I think a song is something that really creates a good feeling within you, happy or sad. Success means different things to different people at different times in their lives. Right now, where you are in this life that you continue to evolve in, what does success mean to you? I've thought a lot about this question because when I was younger, I used to think that success was a certain thing that you could get. You know, it was an award or if I could do a show with this person or if I had this much money in my bank account. Um, but I think that as you get older, you realize those some of those things you thought weren't attainable really are maybe attainable. And so when you get them, you don't have that feeling of I've made it or this is success. So for me right now, it's always I always think back to my younger self. It's, you know, would what I'm doing right now make that little girl proud? It's I'm sitting across from Candy O'Terry doing an interview and that would make JC, very proud. <laughs> so Because you listened to me I when you did. were a little girl, I right? I did. I always <laughs> listen to you. And I mean, but that's that's what it's all about, getting to, you know, do things that make you proud and make the younger version of yourself proud. And I think that's what success is for me anyways. I want to say thank you so much for telling us your story, sharing your wisdom on the story behind her success. JC Dawn Valeris, thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me.